Hi everyone, happy Thursday, is that it? <laughs> oh my gosh, I did two videos in a row. That's like the first time in months that's happened. <laughs> well, um, tomorrow I'd like to try to get the next part of my coloring book collection out. Um, I am a little hesitant to post anything Saturday or Sunday, seeing as those are holidays for a lot of people. Um, I might put something up just for fun, um, especially because I don't know exactly what we're doing this weekend. The plan was originally to like visit the in-laws, visit the parents. However, where I live in Tennessee, we're part of this gigantic um, like deep freeze that's happening across the U.S. and Tonight, it has started out as rain, but within an hour, it's supposed to change over to snow, and we're going from, if I read that right, was it 60 degrees as a high today? It's 45 right now. We're going to go from 45 all the way to negative 2 at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. So, um, I also... Probably will be having problems with my joints and arthritis tomorrow. I have arthritis fibro. I have a feeling because this is exactly the type of cold front uh, pressure change that gets me gets my body all wired up. So that probably doesn't bode well for me. However, depending on how much snow and ice we get tonight, it's not going anywhere until Tuesday. So we may not be able to get even off the hill to go visit anybody we will just have to here it could snow a half inch it could snow three inches and it could be a layer of ice over all of it so um we're just going to kind of have to see it may be that we have to just bunker down this week and then maybe do all the christmas stuff next weekend i don't know I would hate to it's a bummer i was sick last saturday and i missed going out with my parents to do like this big drive through christmas lights thing so i hate to miss christmas too like that would be really frustrating but you know what can you do anyway say all that to say um depending on how i feel i might do a color in chat saturday i mean sunday or monday um as i know a lot of people um, while people, a lot are busy, a lot, you know, some people, it's a hard time of year for a lot of people and, you know, maybe listening to <laughs> the way my life is going <laughs> might make you feel, might, might bring a little cheer into your life. Not to say that I guess things are going great, but, um, I guess we're, at least we're all in it together, right? Okay. Said all that to say, um, did want to show you the few books I have picked up again really haven't been coloring however i'm going to try to color a little this weekend what are you doing if you want down let me let now, now please please don't <sighs> there i will put you down scamper decided to be bold and jump on top of my desk and then she was looking for a way to jump down and where she's been in so much pain from her arthritis and stuff I didn't want her to jar herself that bad plus she look she's been rather clumsy and she would not have felt well and probably taken out my drink or something breakable all right um like i said haven't been coloring much i did pick up a few books these two are fairly um well they're all kind of new releases but these are really i don't know if i picked up i guess i could look at my stack i might have picked up a few more christmas books but I really didn't pick up very many this year, which makes sense because I just haven't been coloring that much. But I did pick up a col couple color by numbers I would like to work, work on this weekend. So, um, And the rest of the year. I basically consider Christmas tech coloring good to go till the end of the year. So um, let's get started. Now that I've talked for almost five minutes straight. Actually, let me show you the non-color by number first. That's what I usually do. All right, so Castle Art has come out with some coloring books, and they had them available for pre-order, so I went ahead and did the pre-order. There's four books total right now. The two I don't have are Castles and Christmas. 
Um, again, I'm not huge on Christmas coloring. I kind of waffled on it. It actually looked kind of cute, but um, ultimately I just wanted two of the books. And um, they are a bit pricey right now on the Castle Arts site as of this date um, that this video is posting. They are marked down to $19.99 US each. Um, and, you know, don't really know anything about these books, like what type of paper they are, or anything like that. So I figured these would probably be something people are really interested in to see what they look like, you know, before they look to purchase one. So I did pick up two. Um, they are an interesting size. So standard coloring book size is like an eight and a half by 11. And these are way wider, but not quite as tall. But still like longer than like a Joanna Bassford or a Kirby Rosanna is. I'm trying to think, almost kind of like a color, almost like a tablet form where you would flip it this way. I guess if you did it that way, it would be more in line with an eight and a half by 11. Yeah. So almost an eight and a half by 11 if you turned it that way. So, so there we go. It's 36. It says beautiful dreamscapes. It says resident artists so I don't know if they actually put the artist's name I guess we're going to find out they have a this oh boy shiny cover sorry about that this coloring book belongs to where you can put in there they have some information here I'm trying to see it's going to be really hard to show that where you guys can see it because cover is very glossy. Uh, okay, well. It does talk about suitable media, quality paper. Um, it's looking like it's recommending watercolor, gouache paints, gel pens, um, pastel tint pencils, watercolor pencils, watercolor brush pens, and colored pencils. Now, watercolor brush pens are interesting. Now this was what one of the things that really got my interest. Um, well, over here they show resident our resident artists recommend what to use. So of course Castle Arts has their own brand of colored pencils. They have regular colored pencils, gold, pastel tint, and metallic. And this shows like what sets are available. And then more here like their watercolor pencils, paints, brush pens, gel pens, and so on. I know it's really hard to read that. I'm sorry. It's just, there we go. It's a little bit better. So they show like inspirational versions of each of the pictures, which inspirational meaning, well, that would take ages, but it's still really cool to see what they could, um, what they could be. And these are printed double-sided so and they're tied the names of the images are titled trying to get my lighting here in better shape it's not going well is it there we go it's a little better So I like the unique size to these. Um, the fact that they're they're uh, like a skate dreamscape landscape kind of um, mode portrait, not portrait mode. Ugh, my brain is not working today, y'all. All right, so here we go. Here be dragons. Is how the map makers of the old termed the unexplored wild oceans surrounding the known world. Are these dragons the evil? Sorry. You're not going to be able to read that because it's getting blurry. Are these dragons the evil reptiles of Western mythology or the benefic beneficent creatures worshipped in the Far East? Our knight on his quest to the Far Castle is soon to discover to his dread or delight. So here is the picture. 
These are single sided. Huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. I was a little worried about that. However, if you do use something that bleeds through, keep in mind that this text that's over here might be a little hard to read, but if you're not too concerned on preserving that. Now, um, how, now, would markers bleed on this paper? I don't know. That would require some testing. I'm trying to get a feel for the paper. So the paper feels, it's a heavier paper. Well, see, not, not quite like cardstock, not quite thick like color it paper but pretty thick paper. And I think it feels pretty smooth. It does not feel very, it feels pretty smooth. So I think, um, again, you would have to test. Generally for me, softer color pencils do better on um, smoother paper for me. There's a caption for each of these on the left side, but I'm just showing you guys the images. And they all have the, this light border around them, which is really nice. Also means they do not go into the crease. As you can see here, there is, well, you can kind of see, there is part of the frame there. So very glad for that, that um, because art that goes into the crease drives me crazy. I, I would, you know, this seems like pretty, um, I wouldn't say complicated art. I guess that's not really what I'm thinking, but like, I feel like this would take a lot of, these are not just super simple images either, so. Kind of remind me a little bit of like, you know, mythographic this this fantasy book does um i see some similarities Not any shading or shadowing as far as I can tell. It's just straight line art. Not super thick bold line art. I would say just kind of on a medium range. This, I will say this is really awkward to flip. Just because of the paper size. It reminds me a little bit of some of like the Fantasia book I have. Just the type of art. Sorry, I'm hitting the camera. Ooh, that one's cool. Speed this up a little. It's late in the day and I'm getting sleepy. And thus, I think I'm slowing down. I don't realize how much I'm prattling on. I like that one with the dragon.
Oh my gosh, the way he's sitting on that branch, y'all, that is that is adorable. And the way they're flying with those uh, big balloons, that is cute. So this is a test your colors, but what's weird is it's on the glossy cover. So it doesn't really work because you're not testing on the actual paper. So that's kind of silly if you ask me. I would rather have a test page of the actual type of paper that I have. So, um, really interesting. Oh, they actually do talk about the artists on the back, right? Nope, they don't. Darn it. I thought that's what they were doing. So, um, yeah, little bummed. Well, let's look at the other one before I give you my thoughts on these. So, I also picked up the flowers book. Sorry for the gulping. I am rather thirsty. Again, similar uh, front on it. 36 flowers. Suitable medium quality paper. You can frame these. I would be interested to know what frame would work with these. And then the same thing on this side about what types of pencils and mediums to use. Now here are the flowers. So it's just the flowers themselves. Um, kind of like a lot of, I'm trying to think of, I can't think of anything right now. But a lot of those just um, single, like where it just features the flower. There's nothing else to the pictures. So these are going they're not, I wouldn't say they're necessarily simple. There's not as much in the picture. However, you know, if you're adding in a lot of shading for the flowers and a lot of blending, I mean, you could spend, you could spend a little bit of time on these. You could spend, you know, hours and hours on these. It really just comes down to, you know, what you enjoy doing. I would be curious to try some watercolor in these with like some pencil shading. One of these days, if I can ever get back to doing stuff, actual doing coloring on the channel, <laughs> that would be fun to do here. But I love it. You've got the flower names. You have inspirational photos here of them. I really like this. So, an aster and daisy. It gives you the flower name, I guess the official scientific name. It describes what they usually look like and whether they're annual or perennial. Like I said, I'm not going to show you all those descriptions because it would take, would be flipping back and forth because this is a very large book. So, Now I got quiet all of a sudden. It feels like a lot more than 36 images, but I mean, that's what it is. It's just, it's just wild out of the book. I mean, I really can't 100% with confidence say, you know, like it's great paper until I start coloring on it and telling you guys what I think. I love marigolds. Oh my gosh. The reason I like them is I'm so lazy when it comes to flowers and those suckers, the way the heat is around here, I can just plant them and let them go and they turn into bushes. They just get gigantic. Like the less attention I give them, the better they do. <laughs> They're like the ideal flower for me. 
Though I don't know, all the ones I snapped up um, when my local, uh, the high school group was doing a uh, greenhouse where they were selling flowers and stuff and I had went up there on the very last day and he's like I'll give you all these flowers for $12 and they had a bunch it was all petunias um salvia something like that is what the tall ones are called and a couple of really raggedy looking begonia plants I tell you what those begonias like really flourish they looked pretty scraggly the first few weeks and i figured because i wasn't babying them they, they just weren't gonna do ever do well but they really like turned out pretty there during the summer and then the deer started eating them and i was really mad about that but i was pretty happy with the flowers i got for twelve dollars i got like my whole front flower bed was full of flowers so I was like, I can't beat that. I would have paid three or four times that much at any garden store. So maybe next year they'll have them. Now I got to yank all that stuff out because it's dead. <laughs> I think none of it's coming back. They usually just do annuals. All right. So thoughts on the new Castle Art books? Um, love that they're single-sided. Um, I think the art looks great. Um, I wish they would say who the artists are, um, because I always like when companies, you know, actually show who their artists are and give them credit. Um, I wish they'd do that. Um, the size of them feels a little unwieldy, like, but I think when I'm coloring, it's not going to be as big a deal. Um, I cannot say for sure on the paper quality single side it has a lot going for it for me however I cannot say anything to the paper quality or whether even markers will work in here or if they will bleed depending on the type of paper so I will have to withhold like my 100% official feelings about it till then however I'd say for 20 bucks 15 20 bucks to me it seemed worth it um, but you know everybody's different in their coloring budget so um, but in my opinion, I don't know, 25 feels a little high for me, but if you could snag them at 15 or 20, I feel like that might be a good price. So, um, but that's just my thoughts on them and I'm glad I bought them. All right. So now to the color by numbers. So again, I picked up a few more Christmas ones. I saw, I think it was Tammy featured this one. It's a ho holiday, another eclipse book just these two come from the same sets of artists that i keep saying i'm going to finish a book before i buy another one and it just never ends up happening however i was really kind of wanting some christmas color by number books these came across my timeline just at that right moment i don't have a ton of eclipse books so um this is C color art books color by number um by eclipse which is aj quinnell and this is holiday so this I ended up getting on the, did I splurge on the premium paper or just get the standard? I think I just got the standard. I don't really know what the difference is between two. I don't know if I've ever gotten the superior paper. This is glossy, so maybe I did get it. <laughs> I'm going to have to go look, aren't I? I'm going to have to go look. Because I don't want to tell y'all wrong. You're like, well, jeez, Michelle. I'm just not on the ball. No, I did get the superior paper. So, I don't know what the standard paper is like. I think I've just been getting the superior paper version. So, um, so these look a little more detailed in some of these pictures. More of a mosaic-y kind of look to them. Wow, that one, I'm trying to figure out. So, there's feet there right? Those are feet. Oh, no, that's a person. Oh, he's carrying the tree. Okay, I see what's happening. <laughs> I was like, why? I, I was very confused. Just an interesting way to do um, holiday-related images. 
with kind of this mosaic um i know this is a specific kind of art form and i can't think of it right off the bat i would like to get one done in here this week fingers crossed i do still have to work uh, three days next week a lot of that will be training for a certification I'm taking I'm not gonna flip through the whole thing just because you can't really tell what all these images are I think most of these will give you a good idea I'm gonna do the same thing with the stone mosaic so very cool and then stone mosaic yes yet another stone mosaic book every time again I say I'm gonna finish one before I pick up another one um, this is their book eight Christmas edition stone mandalas. I do really like these like the eclipse book. They're just really chill. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. They're just, yeah, they're just chill. There's a 24 color palette here. Let me look at the, this one also has a 24 color palette. Oh, now this is interesting. So the stone mosaic has a different color palette, it looks like, than some of their other ones. There is an actual cream as number one. So keep that in mind. If you're used to what I guess they typically use for their color palettes, it is going to be a little different for this one. And again, I probably won't show you all these just because it's kind of hard to see. I don't know what this actually is, but these look like little horns, which I don't know how that's Christmassy, but okay. <laughs> like Michelle, you're seeing things in there. Y'all, it's getting so cold that I have, we have like... We live in an older house. We have a brand new unit, thank goodness. Um, but we live in an older house with drafty windows still. So we've, you know, covered the windows. We have to watch the pipes behind my washer and dryer because, behind my washer, because I've had that one bust on me a few times just because the insulation, like, again, I talked about this the other night. We're trying to figure out a way around it. For now, using a space heater um, on it tends to work not the most ideal solution and yes we're very safe and careful with it um but right now that seems to be the only way we can keep it from busting and having to shut our water off completely but we do all the things like we open the cabinets under the sink and things like that so i um leroy is being denied the porch for probably two or three days because it's not going to get into well, speaking of which, speak of the devil, is it what I think it is? No. Leroy is, okay, I'll go ahead and show you all the rest of this so I can prattle. Um, Leroy is being denied the porch till probably at least Monday, if not Tuesday. Um, what I am doing is I had bought a heated house a while back because we weren't really sure where Taco was going, if he had a place to go. And he has since showed us that I don't know where he's going, but he rarely comes around here except maybe once a day. However, um, because I, like these are temperatures we're not used to. Like negative one, we're talking negative 10, negative 15 wind chill here. Tomorrow, I think we're getting up to 14, 15 degrees, then back down. And then it'll be like that on Sunday. And uh, so like Wesley has been around enough years. I think his owner... The person who's taking care of him we won't i guess owner um probably has a place for him to go however i still worry about him and i still worry about taco i worry about the other neighborhood cats and so um we had bought a heated house for the porch a while back um i the heated house is on our screened in porch um, i also put a cardboard box out there um, wrapped with a blanket and insulated um, put some heated discs out there and I propped open the door to the porch so they can come in and go 
use the houses if they need to um, to at least help them survive the snap. Now, <laughs> the, the more likely scenario is nothing is going to use them or um, we're probably going to have a, fam a family of possums out there. But you know what? That's okay too. The possums need to stay warm as well. Possums are pretty cool. I think they're ugly as sin, but they're still pretty cool creatures and I have no beef with them. We actually do have some pretty fat raccoons out in the ba back end of the property, but we have a cat tube insulated cat house back there too. So I don't know if anything ever uses that. So there's a couple options out there. I'm hoping if they have no other option, they will partake in it. The reason I was checking my phone is we just bought some new ring cameras to you ring doorbells with cameras and um, before I put it up on the screen door in the front I propped it up outside to show me if anything comes in through that door I did wedge it so that hopefully nothing bigger than a cat can come through um, because we do have sadly we do have a lot of dogs roaming the neighborhood and I would hope these people these people that don't have enough sense to take basic care of their animals any other time will have enough sense to keep them somewhere warm tonight but I can't like I said I can't guarantee that I don't know for sure if that'll be the case however I don't want as much as you know I don't want the big animals to freeze either I don't necessarily need like and we have coyotes in this area too I do want whatever small animal can yell on the porch to feel generally protected and not get cornered or anything and like I said we do even have coyotes around here so um have to be careful but trying to do that I'm going to flea treat all the cats for the month and then of course we'll wash everything in hot water just in case though I think anything other than flea eggs probably is not surviving right now you know I definitely don't want to risk bringing fleas in the house either but Anyway, my ring doorbell's set up, so I'm kind of hoping I'll see something. Hopefully it's not a skunk. I mean, that's that's my biggest fear, is a skunk going to worm his way into one of those houses. And again, skunks need warmth too. I'm not saying that. I just don't want them to get startled and then spray the porch. Because then we're just... <laughs> my husband probably won't ever speak to me again. <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, no, just y'all keep your fingers crossed, um, for everybody that's being affected by this. I mean, I know people like white Christmases. I know people like snow and stuff, but it always stresses me out because when it gets this cold, I always worry about, like, animals that are out there. Um, a lot of people around here just don't take care of their animals like they should and so anytime it dips down cold I worry about them I worry about people that are sleeping in their cars I worry about the homeless because we do have quite a few homeless uh, pop people in Nashville and probably in this area more than people realize and people that like live in their cars and stuff and it's just when we get down to this type of bitter cold again I know people like snow I like snow too I like to see one good snow a year but it just stresses me out more because I know it's it gets to dangerous cold levels for people and animals and it just it worries me but yeah, I'm not sitting there saying, God, man now I sound judgy I'm not trying to sound judgy I'm just saying this is it, it wor I I like snow but it also concerns me I guess is what I'm trying to say I don't know y'all just I don't even know anymore. anyway I hope wherever you are you're warm and dry your animals and kids and fur kids and whatever have you are warm and dry and that um, you stay that way for the next few days um, and uh, yeah so now that I've probably pissed off a bunch of people and made them feel defensive I'm going to stop now um, I will probably be back with Working through my collection again tomorrow, color by numbers. I've got the video. I just need to render it and get it ready. And uh, then we'll see this weekend how things go. A lot of it's going to depend on how I feel when I wake up in the morning. Um, that's going to drive a lot of what I do this weekend. So, But 
All right. Thanks guys for watching and bye for now.